This is Twit. Before we actually jump into ARVR, our audiences love to hear about origin stories. Can you maybe give us a quick journey through your experiences until you hit Torch? Yeah, uh, I worked in software, um, primarily video games, for about 10 or 15 years. Uh, Got out of the video game industry and consulted for seven or eight years, doing a lot of video game, uh, using a lot of video game tech for non-gaming applications. And uh, I really got into augmented reality a little too early, about 2012. And uh, I wound up at a company called Magic Leap. Uh, I joined them in early 2014, uh, helped grow that company for a couple years uh, and and built a lot of their developer tools and the teams around that. And uh, saw a lot of opportunities in 3D computing coming this way and decided it was time to get back to being uh, my own boss and starting our own company. So we formed Torch early last year here in Portland, and uh, we've been working towards our first product ever since. That's super cool. Now, that, now there's there's a now you talk a little bit about um, you know obviously 3D and making it easier. Now there are tools for uh, designers and developers alike out there for you know building just mobile and web applications, whether it's I think Sketch or using Zeppelin for sharing and Adobe XD. But this is this is just a way for people to 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 kind of step into the three D realm. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, you hit it right on the head. Basically, uh, if you look at how software application developments evolved uh, over the past, especially five years, we've gone very design first when it comes to cloud applications and mobile applications. So we finally figured out after decades of of engineering a piece of code and then handing it to someone and saying, can you make this usable and and match our brand and, and, uh, you know, be efficient, uh, we've we evolved our tooling on the on the 2D side to say, well, let's design a functional prototype first. Let's get all the stakeholders signed off on it, and let's talk around the end result, and then engineer towards that. And uh, that has just that part of the ecosystem just has not existed for 3D until now. Right. I mean, those those tools are, are fairly easy to use. They get they kind of get you bootstrapped pretty quickly. And in fact, me being as a developer. I actually play with Sketch quite a bit, and it makes me, you know, I actually can build things pretty quickly and actually export it and, and actually get to try stuff out, which is pretty neat. Now, how, how is Torch actually doing this? What, what is it? How are you actually making it easier? Is it is it just like UI driven? Is it wizard driven? How is it actually driven? Yeah, so what we did was is we spent a lot of the past year talking to professional designers, experienced designers. So designers is a very overloaded term. Uh, In our world, we're talking about the people that do the user experience of applications. And uh, they are used to using tools like Sketch and Envision and Figma to put together these functional prototypes visually. And they usually respond to user input, and it's very view-based. So we took that model and we applied it to the 3D space. And the way we decided to do it was all on a mobile device. So the, the there was kind of three main pain points we identified when we really started digging into why, why is this process so hard and expensive and difficult. And dealing with 3D assets is difficult. They're not as easy to use as a PNG or a PSD. Uh, building something functional uh, was without writing any code is almost impossible with the old tools, tool chains and workflows. And right. then collaborating with people. So, you know, a lot of these uh, 2D design prototyping environments are moving to the cloud pretty quickly because of the collaboration and sharing aspect. And so we figured out a way to fold in the, you know, to solve those pain points with one platform. And we actually run on top of augmented reality. So our first product is a mobile application uh, for iPad and iPhone to start, and we'll be adding Android support later. And the reason why is with their AR kit capabilities on the iOS side, we can actually have someone walk around a 3D object or walk around in a 3D coordinate space, whereas the old way would have been kind of using your mouse and keyboard to try to navigate the space on a screen, like a first-person shooter game almost. And so we wanted to give people this very intuitive a uh, sense of uh, of working with 3D directly as directly as possible. So it's all visual, and uh, the kind of the main components of that are uh, analogous to how screen applications are built. You have scenes instead of screens, where just kind of your 
your spatial arrangement of these assets, and then you connect interactivity by responding to input uh, generated by the user. And then that can trigger changes to the scene or can trigger changes to other objects. And you can actually hook up some pretty complex logic that way. And then we just make it super easy to pull in 2D and 3D assets. So we try to eliminate, we, we process those on the cloud side and try to eliminate all the ways you can kind of trip yourself up trying to get to that point. That's pretty neat. Now, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, the kind of effort getting into it. Now, you guys have, a, I think, a, video, a demo video of actually getting an authoring example, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that one's called the Torch Interaction Authoring Example. It's just a quick peek uh, at how someone can very easily drag assets in so that that's dragging in from the what we call the object drawer at the bottom and just visually placing it. And then what's happening here is we're going to add an interaction to that yellow cube. We're going to target the chair. And we're basically telling uh, Torch that this particular interaction, we want to change the color of the chair to yellow to match the cube. And so that shows you your end state. And then once you save it, you hit play to test it. And then you tap the cube and it changes the chair. Uh, so it's, it's really that simple, uh, the ability to target other objects or to tell the project to change itself uh, kind of lays this nice groundwork for hooking up uh, prototypes or storyboards, uh, but there's also a real-time collaboration aspect. So because we're on these mobile devices, you can invite a bunch of people in to kind of real-time edit with you, similar to like Google Docs in a lot of ways, uh, to kind of talk around a project and, and really uh, iterate collaboratively around that. And, and so it, it's all about making 3D super fast and accessible so it's a part of the planning process and the concepting process as early as possible. Right. It's interesting because these other design apps, they it's, it sounds like it's even simpler than some of those because I've used Figma before and InDesign, and it takes a lot more clicks, a lot more configuration to kind of get to that kind of decision-making tree that you can get to, and it looks like even in this app. And then you kind of add the sharing capabilities on top of it, but not only just sharing, but you're saying you also can collab. And so, so yep. other people can actually change the design as well, uh, if they if have you, the app? If you want them to, yes. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. So, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. So we've, we've got some examples uh, that, that'll be on our new website that show two people working in the same project at the same time. It's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's really cool. I, I can't wait to see how people really leverage that because not only can you be collaborating with someone in the same physical space, because keep in mind, uh, we're running on augmented reality, so you're seeing the real environment uh, at the same time, but you can also have someone completely remote working on the same project with you. So it opens up these interesting modalities that we haven't really had a lot of uh, exposure to yet, which is like we're all talking about the same 3D scene that we're looking at, but we're talking about it on our conference room table and you're talking about it in your home office. Uh, but we can still uh, see it in all these contexts, but also talk about it like we're talking around the same project. So there's a lot of interesting opportunities there that really just haven't been exposed to most people.